So the first major set of epidemics that I want to talk about today are the disease exchanges associated with what historians call the Columbian Exchange. Um, the Columbian Exchange is uh, it's a term that was originally coined by the historian Alfred Crosby. Um, and what he was trying to look at was ecological history, but it's come to encapsulate a larger set of exchanges that are still in some sense going on around the world. Um, Crosby was trying to describe and analyze the unparalleled and unprecedented transformation of the world that was set in motion by uh, what we might call the European Age of Exploration. Um, starting with Columbus, um, people start to travel more extensively over the globe than they had previous to that. If you remember some of our material on the Black Death, what happens is people are often traveling over land. And so they're moving slowly, and the movement of goods and people and other life forms and plants goes very, very slowly. And often there isn't a lot of exchange um, of uh, diseases and life forms and so forth over this um, period or over the globe. Um, what happens starting around the year 1500 is that you have a massive movement of peoples and a massive exchange of biological organisms ranging from pathogens to animals to plants. Um, so for example, by um, uh, the late 16th, early 17th century, Mexico City is actually one of the largest cities in the world. Um, it has people who are European in origin, um, who are Native Americans in origin, some of the Native peoples who had lived in that area before. Um, it has African-derived um, uh, peoples there. Um, there are Asians, there are even Chinese people who are in Mexico City in this period. And eventually, you get people of mixed racial origins uh, in all of these different combinations living in a place like that. And that had never occurred on such a scale before the European Age of Exploration. Um, as a result of this, we see a massive expansion in trade going on. People are trading things all over the world. And if you remember from maybe previous history courses, there are, um, uh, people are looking for spices and all sorts of other things to bring in from what the Europeans think of as the Far East. Um, the spices aren't the only thing, but a lot of the motivation for undertaking this exploration is to look for ways to trade with other parts of the world. So that economic motivation really drives um, the Europeans' exploration, and it's one of the underlying roots of the Columbian Exchange. Um, the Chinese actually end up acquiring about half of the silver eventually from the Spanish mines. It creates a major expansion of the Chinese money supply at the time. Uh, and it leads to many of the typical things we see with expanded money supplies. Um, but that trade continues over the world and it's not just European trade. It's not just the Europeans engaged in this. What it does is it starts to set off an expansion of trade and interchange of, of uh, people and goods and life for, forms all over the world. Crosby tended to focus on the biodiversity exchange. So for our purposes, what we're going to talk about are the parasites and germs that go from everywhere to everywhere. Um, and for Crosby, this is actually the most significant part of the Columbian Exchange. Um, he refers to it as a tsunami of biological exchange. So we see diseases from the Eurasian landmass going to the Americas and Africa, from Africa to the Americas and, and Eurasia, and from uh, the Americas to Africa and Eurasia. So let me just list for you some of the diseases, and these are some of the greatest killers in human history. Um, from Eurasia to the Americas, uh, we have smallpox, influenza, measles, typhus, and plague, as in bubonic, pneumonic sort of plague. So that's from the Eurasian landmass to the Americas. From Africa to the Americas and Eurasia, we have malaria and yellow fever. And we'll see in the next segment how this affects actually the transatlantic slave trade and even contemporary racial relations in the United States. And from uh, the Americas to Africa and Eurasia, we have syphilis, encephalitis, polio, and hepatitis. So we have this massive mixing up of germs that have been previously isolated in different places, and they've all been thrown into a soup together. Well, the Columbian Exchange then has these 
really incredible consequences. It's, it's the world we live in now is a post-Columbian exchange world. Um, in essence, the world becomes a global system, economically and ecologically. You know, we often talk about invasive species of various sorts um, as if it were a new phenomenon, if it just were occurring because our ships and planes are so fast. But it began, in essence, as quickly as the European um, explorations began. Even before that, with trade, there are little bits of it. But some of the first things that Columbus does when he comes back from his voyages to um, the Caribbean is he bring plants and animals and people with him back to Spain and they start to propagate throughout Spain and the rest of Europe. The thing that we call globalization, which really starts in the 1890s and has a, a first burst of activity in the early, uh, late 19th and early 20th century and really takes off um, in the latter part of the 20th century, but its very deepest roots are actually in this global transformation that go on in the 16th century. The idea of intercontinental trade, of global exchanges of goods and people and, and uh, 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 animals and plants really gets going with what Crosby calls the Columbian Exchange. Um, I want to read to you um, just a, a, a piece out of uh, a 16th century general history of New Spain, that is um, Mexico, Central America, the Southwest United States, um, talking about uh, an outbreak, an epidemic that occurs there. So um, this is from uh, a writer named Sahagún, and it's in his Historia General de las Cosas de Nueva España, and it's from somewhere between 1575-1580, and he says, among concerning the Indians um, uh, in his area of New Spain near Mexico City. An epidemic broke out, a sickness of pustules. It began in te, uh, Tepelhuitl. Large bumps spread on people. Some were entirely covered. The victims could no longer walk about, but lay in their dwellings and sleeping places. And when they made a motion, they called out loudly. The pustules that covered people caused great desolation. Very many people died of them, and many just starved to death. Starvation reigned, and no one took care of others any longer. And we see this breakdown of social norms occurring over and over again, not just in the, uh, the exchanges of diseases with the New World. It goes back as far as Thucydides. He even mentions it when he talks about the effect of the plague on the Athenians, the breakdown of social order that comes when people think that they're about to die. Um, one last thing to let you know and to remind you, um, the Columbian Exchange, the diseases that are spread from it, um, the most serious effects in terms of human populations occur in the Americas. The diseases that come from especially the Eurasian landmass decimate the populations of the Americas. Um, it's estimated that somewhere between 90 and 95 percent of the population of North and South America are wiped out by smallpox and other diseases that the Europeans bring over with them. And so, although we sometimes call the Spanish and the French and the English, you know, conquerors or conquistadors and so forth, um, and they often get much of uh, the direct blame for decimating these populations, it's the diseases they bring with them that do most of the work. When um, Cortez is trying to conquer Mexico City, his way is paved um, primarily by the fact that the endemic smallpox and other diseases that he and his soldiers brought with them from Spain um, raged through the capital. So by the time Cortez is able to get a coalition of other unsatisfied natives who've been under the thumb of the Aztec or Mexica Empire, um, most of the people who would defend uh, what is now Mexico City have been killed off, uh, devastated by the plagues that are there. So it's very easy for Cortez to come in and essentially take over and, get, and claim all the credit for himself for conquering this vast empire, when really it's a variety of bacteria and viruses that have done the work for him.